Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are on Connect 2013, and I'm your host, Chris DaCosta. We are at the United Business Fair at the Kaka F Terrain. And with me today is uh, engineer Hank Narendop. He prefers to call himself Hank Humbly. <laughs> uh, Mr. Narendop, welcome to Connect okay. 2013. Welcome, thank you. Uh, Mr. Narendop uh, is the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce which uh, in uh, the Dutch acronym is KKF or KKF uh, in English and uh, he is also the CEO of, of uh, Nana Resources and also the owner and CEO of Philab Laboratories. Mr. Narendra. Uh, yes. Mr. Chris. You can just call me Chris. <laughs> uh, how uh, uh, has it been, how has your experience been as the CEO of KKF? Oh, it's uh, very challenging. It's a um, fantastic time. And um, I have been a member of our chamber for the past 15, 16 years. Right. And it's only the last year that I have had the honor to be elected as the, the chairman. Right. So, you know, and also because there are very exciting times in Suriname, of course. Right. And on top of that, also government that certainly has some characteristics of understanding the role of the private sector. Right. That makes this time extra challenging. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, South America, past and Africa, and this. Gedurende een hele lange periode aan elkaar heeft vastgezeten. Um, Ik ga gelijk beginnen te vertellen dat terwijl ze aan elkaar vastzaten, er natuurlijk een heleboel geologische processen hebben plaatsgevonden. En het interessante is dat je inderdaad zult zien dat er een heleboel overeenkomsten zijn wat betreft de geologie tussen het noordoosten van Zuid-Amerika en het Midden-Westen. Van Afrika. Het is zelfs zo sterk dat er theorieën ontwikkeld zijn op basis van wat men weet in Afrika en dat men parallellen heeft getrokken naar Zuid-Amerika en men bleek nog eens een keertje gelijk te hebben ook. Dus dat is, dit is dus helemaal een bevestiging van deze theorie. Volgende. Die Gondwana dat concept dat vertaalt zich verder naar Zuid-Amerika, zoals ik net eerder zei. En Zuid-Amerika bestaat uit heel, drie hele grote gebieden. Aan de ene kant het Andersgebergte. In het zuiden het Braziliaans schild. Vervolgens daar ten noorden van het Amazonebekken. En in het noorden het gebied waar wij wonen, het zogenaamde Guyana Shield. En Guyana Shield met onder andere Venezuela, Colombia, een deel van Colombia althans, noorden van Brazilië, Suriname, Guyana, Frans Guyana, die bestaan uit zogenaamde oude kratonen, waar je ook nog eens een keer de Greenstone Belt hebt. U kunt rustig vergeten, wat het allemaal is, maar ik moet het wel even noemen, vervolgens heb je dan ook nog het verschijnsel van het zogenaamde Atlantische Tweelingbekken, het concept met betrekking waar ik zo net al even over gehad heb. Volgende. Wat is nou die Guyana Shield? Het is een van de zogenaamde drie kratonen van het Zuid-Amerikaans plat. Het is heel oud. 1,7 miljard jaren oud. Wat zijn je hobby's, uh, by the way? I mean, do you still carry them with you? Unfortunately, I'm not really doing both, both of them at the required level and intensity. But um, I like to play music. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I used to play congas. congas. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. So, and uh, uh, for sports, I, uh, my hobby is tennis. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not really part of the top executive crowd. Right, right. I like normal people. Right, you know, right. And I feel very comfortable right, right. amongst people and right. people that you can right. share your love for music or right. whatsoever. So right. it's, uh, I'm not really uh, uh, 
my first name is not Mrs. CEO. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you are, you, you, as you said, you you belong to the common man. Yeah, so I you, think so. I hope you, so. You you touch your base with the common man. Yeah. Your heart speaks for the common person, yeah. Yeah. which is very nice thing to hear. Well, uh, I hope uh, that they also experience me right the in same, the same way. manner, yeah, in the same, same way. way. Yeah. Uh, to move on to uh, the the objective of uh, your speech today, uh, you spoke about uh, the. Uh, there is mineral resources uh, and, and uh, capacities that are there in Suriname. Uh, what would you uh, say about the mining sector to the to the international world who is watching this video? Because this video is in English, and the audience, therefore, is is a certain uh, group. Uh, spectators are a certain group of this video right now who's watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, not only maybe Dutch speaking, but also uh, a large group who watch English uh, content yep. so uh, for them what uh, would you what message do you have about this, the current situation uh, of, of mining and minerals in Suriname well the first thing I would like to say is that Suriname is a fantastic place for investment right uh, not because of the laws and this and that but because we have a very hospitable people right very friendly and very well made, good natured people. Right. It's um, every day when I'm walking around and I'm in touch with Surinamese, I feel happy to be part of this people. Right. You know, and I think that we have a lot to share with the whole world, you know, how we are. And, um, and the place is open for investment. Of course, the conditions of investment will change over time. That's always a very dynamic situation. Right. As I told in my little introduction today, uh, Suriname has over a century experience with investments from multinationals. I mean, right. we started with, with our bauxite uh, industry right. in the early, uh, in, in 1903 or 1904. Correct. So, um, and Suriname has always been behaving as a reliable partner mm -hmm. and um, um, and of course over time the relationship between the company and the Suriname people and the government has been changing mm -hmm. you know and, mm -hmm. and, and and the share of the Suriname right. people has been increasing not only in in, 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 in in quantity but also in quality right and of course we can uh, envision and we can see that that will happen also in the future right you know right and the the, the the good thing of Suriname is that we are able to have all this development in a very mature and stable way sometimes right. I must confess we are not able to to define and to express ourselves in the best way correct you know but I can guarantee that the Sudanese people and also the government, they are very reasonable, very right. reasonable people. Right. And uh, and that's why I have a lot of confidence in the, in the future of this country. The Greenstone Belts, where I net even over heb gehad, the onderdeel zijn van deze van dit Guyana schild. In de oude kratonen bevatten vaak erdsafzettingen, met daarin goud, zilver, koper, zink. Lood, nickel, mangaan, chroom, ijzer, tin, molybdeen, boxiet, kaolin. Zoals je ziet, een hele verzameling van mineralen die, waarvan een heleboel een industriële toepassing hebben. Ik heb het net even al gehad over het concept van het Atlantische tweelingbekken. Concept. En wat u zich moet voorstellen, toen ze nog aan elkaar vast zaten, zo'n 1700 miljoen jaren geleden, dat je accumulatie had, accumulatie, vervolgens bedekking, waarvan? Van overblijfselen van planten en dieren. En dat is organisch materiaal. Opgehoopt, verzameld, bedekt. En vervolgens getransformeerd. Omgezet, chemisch omgezet. Waarbij de koolwaterstoffen, oftewel aardolie en allerlei aardolieproducten, zijn ontstaan. 
Dat gebeurde zo'n 1700 miljoen jaar geleden. Vervolgens hadden we het verschijnsel dat die continenten uit elkaar dreven. Met medeneming van hun mineralen, zowel aan de ene kant als de andere kant. Uh, what uh, uh, would you like to say to the potential investor, maybe who might be watching this uh, video uh, online or on the web, uh, who might have interest in investing in the mining sector? What are the areas they can explore in Suriname? As I also, as I, as, as I said uh, earlier, is that uh, Suriname has a wealth of minerals, and we have only that top, you know, right. and, and, and uh, there are numerous minerals in the country and um, <laughs> I have to make a little bit of propaganda for myself and right. I have a, a lab so we can check all those um, uh, possibilities. minerals and possibilities. Yeah. Right. We, have a, we, have a, we have a very good laboratory with... Uh, so according to you, which... Uh, so I do understand that there are certain uh, minerals which have been excavated and they have been researched on and there's mining like gold, is bauxite yeah. and aluminium are a few. Yeah. But that's on the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. underneath the iceberg, which are those minerals which have not been touched and possibly we can attract the foreign in, foreign direct investment to, uh, to come in? To be, uh, to be honest, at this moment, I'm not really prepared to go into too much detail about that. But lithium bearing, lithium bearing materials, you know, right, it can be used in in in, in the, in the high tech um, industry. Uh, industry, right, are available in Suriname. Right, I cannot say that that is enough, but it can certainly be explored. And right. the tools through that type of exploration uh, is certainly uh, available in Suriname. Right. Is that the only one that you would like to uh, refer to? Is there something it's else? That's the only one I know about that because by na my profession, I am not educated in geology. Right. So right. it would be very difficult for me, to, actually for make me a to say this and this and that mineral. Right. But you know. Right. But there are plenty of minerals. Right. As a matter of fact, the only thing you have to do is look at the other side of the ocean, Africa. And right. see which one you have there. Right. And I, I can almost give you the assurance that in Suriname we have the it's same. It's going to be the same. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, what is uh, uh, your, you think, uh, at this moment, the vision of Kaka F for the country? <laughs> well, um, I think that one of the um, most important things in Suriname is that we have to help Suriname and the Suriname private sector to find right. its way in the process of regional integration. Right. You know, it's one of the important things. Elements. And of, yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, what we as a private sector organization do is we make our entrepreneurs, uh, we give, we do everything in our, within our means to, 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 to make them ready for that job. You know, mm -hmm. train them mm -hmm. in all fields. Mm -hmm. And we have a focus, of course, on this medium and small enterprises sector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the sector we are focused on. Yeah. And those are the uh, very important aspects. And on top of that, this is the, the third other very important aspect of our uh, work is that we also focus on sectors that can, um, um, that have to be developed in the light of the fact that now our economy is based on certain uh, uh, minerals that can be depleted. Right. So we have to look at other sectors that have to be developed. Right. You know, and uh, and and the chamber is also very focused on that mm -hmm. to have that development in the other sectors. Ik zit ook in dat gebeuren, alleen een stuk kleiner. Volgende. Ook onze vriend Lipo Sam zit in dit gebeuren. Ruben met zijn organisatie Wilab. Kaolin wordt ook geëxploiteerd door Mungo Minerals. De data exact ken ik niet, maar ook op grond van deze voorkomens met extensieve reserves aan Kaolin. Volgende. Aardolie heb ik net uitgelegd waarom het voorkomt in Suriname. Het is niet eens een toeval. Dit is gebaseerd op het geologisch gebeuren en de geologische fenomenen. 
volgende. De projecten die ontwikkeld worden op grond van deze voorkomens. We weten dat de IM Gold wordt uitgebreid op grond van aantonen van nog meer reserves. Het is geen raffinaderij, het is een de uitbreiding van de verwerkingsinstallatie, de mil, met ongeveer een 600.000 troy ons per jaar. Waarbij drie nieuwe mijnen ontwikkeld worden. Newman zijn we ook op de hoogte, de regering staat op het punt om de overeenkomst te tekenen. Miriam, Sabayo en Saramaka. Reunion Gold, ook een forse exploratiemaatschappij. Die haar sporen in Suriname heeft. Het zijn eigenlijk dezelfde mensen. Die, um, of dezelfde maatschappij. Die um, Gros Roosevelt ontwikkeld heeft en ontdekt heeft. Die zitten nu ook te exploreren. In het Leliegebergte. En verder is ook nog actief. De maatschappij die voorheen bekend stond. Als Grasalco. Maar nu de State Mining and Minerals Company is. Met een heleboel projecten die ook op stapel zijn. Volgende. Ook bij de staatsolie zijn de nodige projecten op stapel, gebaseerd op hun onshore olieproductie. De investering is fors en beloopt bijna 1 miljard US dollar uh, over de komende vijf jaren. Volgende. Um, ik wijs nog even weer op de voorkomens die je in dat gebied hebt, die aan elkaar zaten in het verleden. Volgende. En um, ik verwijs naar publicaties van Reuters, waarin inderdaad men olie had gevonden, niet alleen in Afrika, maar ook recentelijk, een jaar geleden ongeveer, in Frans Guyana, waarbij men een uh, enorme vondst heeft gedaan. Um, dit is een van de redenen waarom onze staatsolie natuurlijk erg hoopvol is, dat men ook een goede hit zal maken in, de, in, de, in het offshore gebied van Suriname. Volgende. Dat is dus het regionaal succes waar ik het net over had. De volgende. Een paar opmerkingen over de omgeving waarin het ene en ander mogelijk is geweest in Suriname. We hebben zoals we allemaal weten uit de schoolboeken... Eigenlijk best een lange ervaring met deze ontwikkeling. We zijn al langer dan een eeuw bezig, vanaf 1903, toen uh, Alcoa in het land kwam. Ik moet erop wijzen dat het allemaal mogelijk is geweest in een sfeer van compromis. Wat ook kenmerkend is, is dat de, het aandeel van Suriname gestaag toe is genomen. De huidige situatie die we hebben is dat hetzelfde nog geldt, alleen... Wat ook al begrijpelijk is, zoals overal in de wereld eigenlijk plaatsvindt, is er een grotere aandrang voor het aandeel van het gasland. En ook hetzelfde heb je in Suriname. Wat mij wel opvalt, is dat er wat dat betreft in het beleid van onze overheid nog geen duidelijke communicatie is wat het beleid op dit gebied is. En dat kan natuurlijk wel consequenties hebben voor... De risico's dat het buitenlands kapitaal neemt om te investeren in de exploratie. En uh, de grap is altijd dat menen daaraan gaat altijd vooraf exploratie. En uh, could you tell us a little bit more about Nana Resources? Uh, is it Nana Resources? Yes, Nana Resources Envy. Oh yes. Um, You are the CEO. Yeah, yeah. It's this. Yeah, as a matter of fact, owner. Yeah, yeah. Owner and CEO. Yeah, it's um, it's it's fun. It's very much fun, and um, we have. Let let me start that I applied at a certain moment, and that's quite a while ago, uh, almost twenty uh, years ago, longer than twenty years ago. I applied for those um, concessions, those properties, and I had them. And I was able to do a lot of exploration within the framework of a, uh, uh, an agreement with a junior company from Canada. Right. A pretty successful company that right. um, also was at the helm of um, 
the uh, the uh, development of the Cross Roosevelt right. mine. Right. So I had a property and we did quite some work there. And um, but at a certain moment, that was also uh, at the uh, beginning of the financial crisis worldwide. They ended their exploration. So we had two big campaigns where we spent quite some money in the tens of millions. Right. Exploration money. Right. So we have a huge database. Right. And uh, uh, we were able to continue not only exploration, but based on what was uh, proven, we started a small scale operation. Right. So we are right. producing now gold. Right. And, um, and as you know, gold can be will be produced based on two very pertinent uh, techno uh, uh, te techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, first is, of, of course, gravitation concentration. That means that you just separate the gold from the surrounding gang materials right. by uh, filtration and by centrifuge, etc., etc. Right. Shaking tables, that is what we do. And what we want to do, the next step, is uh, to also cyanidation. But to do that, you have to you know, subscribe to, of course, the cyanide code, and your organization must have a culture right. that you can uh, operate in such a way mm -hmm. that you don't have irreversible harm and difficult situation uh, mm -hmm. with the debt as a, as, as a result. Right. That's why we have to mature our company right. in terms of safety and, and environment. And once we are developed, in that right. respect, right. we also will enter the stage where we will retrieve the gold also by cyanidation. Right, so uh, if I understand, uh, one of the core activities of nano resources is excavation, uh, but uh, we are not yet into refining. No, no. so we are, no, no, we are mining. Right. We are mining and uh, we are uh, processing right. the mine material, the ore, right. just by washing the material, the material. Where, we, yeah, where we get gold. Right. But of course, that gold is a gold that has a um, particle size, particle size yes. of, of bigger than uh, 70, 80 migrants. Right. What we cannot get, catch. Mm -hmm. It's the gold finer than what and I just mentioned. Yeah. Right. So, uh, are you looking at uh, uh, your company is an envy? So, yeah. are you looking at uh, partnerships with uh, foreign companies to be able to sell shares? To, uh, if the price is right, we always can talk. Right. So, uh, uh, for the potential investor who is uh, watching this particular video, uh, if you're interested in investing in nano resources as a potential company uh, in Suriname, which already has a huge database of uh, gold mining, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, contact the Kaka F, and uh, they can connect you to nano resources. Anyway, if you're interested in investing in the company, in buying shares, or even looking at some sort of a joint venture collaboration. Uh, towards uh, refining of the gold, bringing it to a more optimum uh, quality and even maybe to be able to trade it uh, further to other foreign markets yeah. uh, and, and setting up a complete distribution chain mechanism. Uh, so potential investors, uh, this is out there for you. Uh, please uh, feel free to get in touch uh, through the Chamber of Commerce, also called the Kaka F uh, in Suriname. You can go online on Google and search for Kaka F Suriname and it should pop up on your uh, Google uh, search uh, list. Uh, tell us a little about uh, Fini Lab. Is it uh, Fila? Fila, sorry. Fila. Fila. What does Fila do? Oh, we have a, a laboratory surfacing the um, the mining industry in Suriname. Right. Uh, it's a relatively good, uh, very good um, facility. We are doing fire assay. That means that is the, the standard method to determine the grade of gold and we uh, are finishing it uh, with um, the atomic absorption spectrometry. Right. At the same time, we also have uh, the equipment inductively coupled plasma, ICP, whereby we can do 40, 50 different minerals and elements. Right. Uh, and that's the facility. At this moment, uh, we have, uh, we have um, expanded uh, our capacity and at this moment we can do up to 1500 samples per day. 
Fantastic. Yeah, it's a big facility. Absolutely, that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, that's uh, uh, quite uh, quite an achievement. Yeah, uh, okay. Is there any other laboratory of this nature in Suriname or uh, that, that is your competitor or are you the only laboratory? No, the, the companies themselves have their own labs. Yeah, they have their own, one of them at least, Gross Roosevelt, they have their right. own lab. But for the uh, regional exploration, as they call it, for the extra samples, we are doing that for them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you act like a third-party yeah. uh, lab yeah. supplier, for but this. also for uh, mining samples, right? Uh, for the expansion of the mine, uh, right. we also serve them. Right. Yeah. Een belangrijke ace van deze maatschappij is dat uh, men aan de nodige voorwaarden moet voldoen om gerekend te kunnen worden als supplier en dat wil zeggen dat je moet voldoen aan de nodige milieueisen, de nodige veiligheidseisen en ook de nodige kwaliteitsnormen die gesteld worden. Volgende. Dat leidt me tot de noodzaak om te diversificeren. Een mijnbouwland is altijd gebaseerd op grondstoffen en we mogen nooit vergeten dat grondstoffen gelimiteerd zijn en eindig zijn. Het houdt een keer op. Op de koop toe moet ook rekening mee houden dat prijzen altijd onderhevig zijn aan bepaalde cycli. Er moet daarom dus gediversifieerd, gediversifieerd worden. De meest voor de hand liggende opties voor Suriname, landbouw, toerisme, ITC. En met de tools en de infrastructuur die ontwikkeld zijn in het mijnbouwland, vooral op het gebied van de vereisten die je moet ontwikkelen op het gebied van kwaliteit, Veiligheid, milieu, maakt je klaar om te investeren in andere sectoren van onze economie. De volgende. Let's pick up the challenge en dank u voor uw aandacht. What is uh, uh, it that you would like to tell them about the opportunities, specific opportunities in Suriname, and how they can go about approaching the right sources? It's, I have to be and remain a little bit general. First of all, I dare say that there will be an influx of capital in Suriname over the next five years. Probably the investment will be over two billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, that's investment. I think that also the, the flow of money towards the government will be tremendous. The government is making an extra effort to make sure that those positive effects trickle to the our to, to the let's common say, mass. Yeah, to, 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 to the common man. Right. So now they are making yeah. a very serious effort and we are as a chamber are also helping to achieve that. Right. So what I'm trying to say is that there is the right environment contrary to what is happening in a lot of other countries where they are struggling to gather economies, you know, uh, Europe has its problem with its death, America has a slow recovery, etc. etc. And then you have this tiny nation in Suriname is doing unbelievably well. Um, if you are catching a plane now where you didn't see people coming to Suriname, enormous amounts of people are now coming to Suriname to explore the place. What is it all about that's going on here? Et right. Et cetera, et cetera. right. That is what is going on. And I can tell you that what we from the business sector and courage, and I think the government is giving a very good ear to that, is we want to stimulate, enter into joint ventures where we have identified certain sectors that should be developed. Absolutely. You know, and that is what I just mentioned to you. Right. And so there are lots of initiatives uh, from uh, other people, young people, and, uh, and the only thing I can tell you, What we know is, of course, based on the past experience. And if that experience is good, and we know that development now is exponential, the only thing I can say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's a very, very positive remark. Uh, well, it was really a pleasure uh, having you with us, uh, Mr. Narendorp. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Hank. Uh, Hank. Hank, it was a pleasure <laughs> okay. having you with us, Hank. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, it was uh, a pleasure having uh, Hank Narendorp with us. Uh, he is the 
current CEO of uh, Kaka F, which is a chamber of commerce, the CEO and the owner of Dana Resources, and the CEO and owner of Philab. Co-owner. Right. The co-owner co -owner. of Philab, which is a, a laboratory which is testing uh, various aspects of minerals uh, in Suriname. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would like to conclude this session of Connect 2013. You are with your host, Chris DaCosta, and this is me signing off. That was the last episode of Connect 2013, produced by Stardom Media Group Worldwide for the United Business Fair. The United Business Fair is the only B2B business fair produced in Suriname by the United Business, which is a proprietary company in Suriname. In 2014, they promised to come back bigger and better. In this video magazine, we interviewed and heard the speeches of seven different speakers representing seven different sectors. And they shared mixed feedback. Some were very optimistic and some were not so optimistic and felt that there was a lot more that Suriname needs to do. To summarize it in my own words, Suriname is a small country, uh, an independent republic in the northeastern part of South America and approximately has a population officially, as per official records, of around 500,000 people. And uh, as per international records, it is the 17th richest country in terms of natural resources. However, as a country, it is evolving every year, politically, socially, and we feel that there is a lot of scope for improvement in various industries and various sectors. Infrastructure is one of them. There is a lot of scope for infrastructure companies to come in and bring in best practices, generate business, and give back to the society of Suriname. Similarly, the tourism and hospitality sector is another area where a lot can be done. If tourism and infrastructure and aviation can be evolved together hand in hand, there will be directly uh, an influx of foreign capital into the country, there will be more trade and commerce, and there will be a better quality of life for the people here. But what is also dangerous is, as there is more urbanization and decentralization of the capital of Paramaribo and the population from Paramaribo into new townships that will be built, there will be more deforestation. As you know that Amazon is one of the largest ecological bases in the world. And cutting down forests rapidly can be very dangerous. So what the government and com companies and foreign direct investors need to keep in mind as they walk into Suriname, that any development activity has to be sustainable in terms of ecological imbalance, in terms of deforestation, in terms of growth and sustainability. Therefore, uh, as we see that there are a lot of potentials, we also know that there will always be hurdles as we try to develop the country, as entrepreneurs try to think about new ideas. One of uh, the other areas that the government needs to work on is improving the labor law and the investment law in the country to make uh, this country and this climate uh, favorable for investment for the foreign direct investor. The labor law needs changes to make the employers feel more at ease because most of the local employers still feel that the labor law favors the employees more than the employer. Of course, that can be debated, but I'm sure that there are some valid points that needs to be taken into consideration by the Ministry of Labor. These are some of the things that we learned, and I'm sure in 2014, we will learn more. With that, it's me, Chris DaCosta, signing off on behalf of Startup Media Group Worldwide and the United Business Fair. Till then, we meet again in 2014. 
don't forget to stay connected.